The COVID-19 effect created a unique shift in the economic landscape, forcing many of today's businesses to pivot. While those lessons will eventually be written about, I wanted to share my list for the greatest CPG industry pivots of all time. Sometimes a CPG entrepreneur has a terrible kind of initial idea that doesn't hit the market. Other times, maybe they have a perfect product, but it flops. While others might have a great product, but it's marketed wrong or positioned within the wrong sector. A great philosopher, or maybe it was an animated fish in a Disney classic, said, just keep swimming. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. I've been fascinated with business pivots since I read Lean Startup about a decade ago, and I've applied many of the book's lessons within my management consulting career in the CPG industry. Defined in the Lean Startup book, a pivot is a structured course correction designed to test a new fundamental hypothesis about the product, strategy, and engine of growth. Now there's about 10 or so different types of business pivots that is discussed in the book. And you can also kind of learn by kind of searching on the Google machine, but I'll highlight a few of those in this content by breaking down some of the greatest usage by CPG brands in history. And I also wanna shout out the co-founder of Foodsters and current board member of CPG brands like Noon Hydration, Once Upon a Farm and Lily's Sweets, Greg Fleischman for the inspiration on this piece of content. So the first CPG pivot that I wanna talk about is with the Wrigley Company. And I wanna start with this CPG brand because I actually just talked about them in a different way on my Twitter. If you guys are not following me on that social media platform, it's just Joshua underscore Shaw. You're definitely missing out on some super insightful content. But in that recent tweet, I mentioned if anybody knew that a multi-pack of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Chewing Gum was the first item marked with the Universal Product Code, or UPC, that was scanned at a checkout. It happened on June 26, 1974 in a Troy, Ohio supermarket, Marsh Supermarket. The Wrigley Company gum was chosen because nobody had been sure that a barcode that was printed on something so small as a pack of chewing gum would work for this new technology. And the Wrigley Company had found a solution to the problem. And that solution really gave them an ample reward as a place within American consumer retail technology history. But they also have made history, at least my history, in terms of the greatest CPG pivots of all time. Wrigley didn't always sell gum. In fact, it started as a soap company in 1891. William Wrigley Jr. would give away free baking powder with a purchase of soap. After baking powder became popular, he used the same strategy and started giving away chewing gum free with purchases. After the chewing gum became more popular than the baking powder and the soap that he was selling, by 1893, Wrigley went on to manufacture his own chewing gum brands. And today, the company that makes Juicy Fruit, Double Mint, and Spearmint is one of the most recognizable brands in American history. Another great CBG pivot was with Avon products, and it has kind of a similar historical story that the Wrigley Company had. David H. McConnell was a book salesman during the 1870s and 1880s, and when he was selling his books, especially to female customers, he would add a sample of perfume in those books. In 1886, he realized that the female customers actually enjoyed the perfume more than they enjoyed the books. So this created him to pivot the company into the California Perfume Company, and it also started the Avon Ladies door-to-door -door sales model. And he did this because he believed that women would be much better suited to sell perfume to other women. And these decisions ultimately led Avon products to becoming one of the most popular beauty brands in the world. 
Another of the greatest CPG pivots that I wanted to talk about was around Hawaiian Punch and how it didn't start out, at least initially, as the drink mix or the beverage that we know about today. It actually was an ice cream topping. Originally known as Leo's Hawaiian Punch, it was created in a garage in California in 1934. The founders started out by selling the tropical fruit syrup as a topping for ice cream or added into ice cream manufacturing. Over the next decade, the syrup increased in its popularity and people started to utilize the product for more than just an ice cream topping. By 1946, Hawaiian Punch was no longer just available in the syrup in the stores and started to resemble what we know today of drink mixes and ready to drink physical packaged beverages. And Hawaiian Punch's popularity skyrocketed by 1955 and became the national selling brand that we know today. The next greatest CPG pivot that I wanna talk about is with Colgate. In 1806, William Colgate started the William Colgate and Company as a starch, soap, and candle business. After his death in 1857, his son took over the business and eventually pivoted the company into the oral care category in 1873. Colgate and Company is historically known as the first company in history to sell toothpaste in a tube known as Colgate's Ribbon Dental Cream, and this was sold first in 1896. Though it briefly lost its market leadership in 1955 because of Procter & Gamble inventing or kind of including a fluoride in their Crest toothpaste, Colgate still is the market leader globally 125 years since the invention of the tube toothpaste and commands about 39% of the toothpaste market globally and about 31% of the manual toothbrush market. Another great CPG pivot was with Ben & Jerry's. Now I just kind of recently learned about this one and maybe I had learned about it before and forgot about it, but I was watching the Food Network's competition show called Ben & Jerry's Clash of the Cones, where they talked about how Ben & Jerry initially had the idea to start a bagel company, not an ice cream company. But Ben & Jerry started out as childhood friends. As they moved on to college or post high school jobs, they kind of lost track of each other, but came back to becoming friends and decided they wanted to start some type of food business that would be much more interesting and exciting than their current jobs. After realizing that the equipment to make bagels was too expensive, they went on to take a $5 correspondence course with the Penn State University for ice cream making. And for some of my ice cream purists, I would suggest if you are ever close to State College, Pennsylvania, and by Penn State University, you head over to the Penn State Berkey Creamery that's been around since 1889 and makes some of the best ice cream that you'll ever taste in your entire life. One of the most popular, well-known brands in the world initially started as a pivot, and I'm talking about Coca-Cola. John Pemberton was a former Confederate soldier. He almost lost his head. He was almost decapitated in the Battle of Columbus. And when he was recovering from his wounds, he got addicted to morphine, which most people during that time unfortunately did, and needed to kind of come up with a solution to wean himself off of that addiction. So Pemberton created Pemberton's French wine coca. The initial concoction included, yes, coca leaf extract, aka cocaine, but also included alcohol from wine. When alcohol was banned in Atlanta, where he lived in the same year he debuted his tonic, Pemberton decided to substitute the wine or the alcohol for sugar and citric acid and then was added with carbonated water that was also known for good health during the time at local soda shops and pharmacies. It's interesting to note that Coca-Cola was not an initial hit, regardless of it maybe tasting really great and having cocaine in it and citric acid that helps get the most out of that cocaine experience. And it's likely because there were a ton of other cocaine type products on the market during the time. So he wasn't the only game in town that maybe had a great product, which sounds eerily similar to the CPG industry today. 
Another interesting CPG pivot was with Kindbar. Daniel Lebetsky might be most famously known as the guy that invented the Kind Bar. But did you know a decade earlier, he started a Mediterranean foods business. PeaceWorks pursued both Middle Eastern peace and profit through a sun-dried tomato product under its flagship brand, Metitalia. The PeaceWorks company is still in existence today with Daniel as the chairman. But his primary focus rightfully shifted towards Kind Snacks, building the company into a billion-dollar annual sales business and recently being acquired by the Mars Corporation for $5 billion. And then the final kind of greatest CPG pivot of all time is with Bang Energy. Vital Pharmaceuticals was founded in 1993 by Jack Oak, who was previously a high school science teacher, also somebody that was really into health, fitness, and nutrition, that kind of had a side business, was helping people, both men and women, become the best versions of themselves. He was a meticulous note taker, always kind of looking at all the variables. And because one of the supplements, an egg white protein supplement that he had all of his clients taking was out of stock, he changed the supplier. He noticed all of his clients didn't lose weight that month, that they made that change. So he sent that product out to a third party lab, realized that it was full of crap, labeled it and meet the actual contents of the product. That made Jack Oak really get kind of frustrated, upset, and he wanted to do something about it. So he entered the supplement industry, started creating his own line of supplements called Vital Pharmaceuticals, or kind of better known at that time as VPX Sports. And throughout the 90s and 2000s, VPX Sports became one of the largest premier supplement brands within the sports nutrition industry. Then in the early to mid 2000s, VPX Sports created a beverage offering called Redline, and it paved the way for Bang Energy. VPX Sports initially launched Bang Energy in 2008, and it hardly resembled its modern form that you think about it today because it resembled more like Redline in packaging and was an uncarbonated beverage. Now, that product initially did not do very well. Redline did continue to do well, and the company learned a ton about distribution, how the beverage industry works comparable to the supplement industry, and they took all of those learnings and put them into the new Bang Energy offering in 2012. This was what you think about today, the 16 ounce traditional carbonated low to no sugar, all of kind of the nutraceutical ingredients and 300 milligrams of caffeine that made the product much different than the existing mainstream energy drink competitors that were on the market during that period of time. Ultimately, that pivot made Bang Energy into the third largest selling energy drink brand in the world, and it now commands around 8% of the total market share within the category. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this content. I would love to hear maybe what your favorite CBG pivot of all time was. So leave a comment on this content or reach out to me on any of my social media accounts.